Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, Routing and Switching Essentials, and this is chapter 4, Routing Concepts. Section 4.3, Router Operations. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to compare ways in which a router builds a routing table when operating in a small to medium sized business network explain routing table entries for directly connected net networks and explain how a router builds a routing table of directly connected networks. A routing table is a file stored in RAM that contains information about directly connected routes, remote routes and networks, network or next hop associations. When we do show IP route or show IPv6 route for IPv6 commands are used to display the con contents of the routing table. So what we should see there is local routes interfaces added in the routing table when an interface is configured, displayed in iOS 15 or newer, directly connected interfaces added to the routing table when the interface is configured and active, static routes added when a route is manually configured by the administrator and the exit interface is active, dynamically routing protocols, so added when EIGIP or OSPF are implemented or RIP and networks are identified. So interpreting the entries of in the routing table. So what do we see here? For example, there's few kind of like codes here. Let me just try and highlight them. For example, this D. This D is a code. How did we learn this route? So identifies how the network was learned by the router. This 10110 forward slash 24 is you actually the networks identify the destination network here is the administrative distance how was the trustworthy of this route so default for eigrp is 90. then we have the metric this area here identifies the metric how the metric to reach the route in the remote networks then via this is the ip address of the neighbor so ip address of directly connected neighbor next hop ip address how long we have learned this route for so it's been for five seconds we have learned this route and what is our exit interface this is our exit interface s000 so this is information that we do need for example if you want to send packets to this network we need to know what is our exit interface or if we don't have an exit interface we just need to know the, in the next hop ip address if we have a next hop ip address then we have to look another lookup in the routing table that's called a recursive lookup to find out the exit interface we do always in the end we need to find out which interface we're going to use as a, our exit interface. So a newly deployed router with, without any configuration interfaces has an empty routing table. An active and configured directly connected interface creates two routing table entries. First, local entry and directly connected. So for example, when we configure, say that we configure uh, this interface here, yeah? So we're going to create a directly connected network. That's our network. 92.168.10. So if I can highlight it here, that's our network. And the second second one is the the IP address of that network or the interface of that IP address, local interface network. So this is this is added with 15.0 and above later iOSs, and it's used to determine the packets that our destination is the action the router. Static routes. Static routes and default static routes can be implemented after directly connected interfaces are added to the routing table. Static routes are manually configured. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about static routes in chapter 6. This is static route examples. For example, here we can see that we have two static routes. Uh, how to get to 192.168.10 on router 2, yeah, from router 2. Now, for example, router 2, if I ask you a question, how many networks are there? Every interface on the router is its own network so that's one network that's the second network and that's the third network here so that's the third network so as you can see the router 2 has three directly connected networks for this information you don't need to tell the router 2 how to get there because the router already knows they are directly connected if interface goes down then the, the it will be removed from the routing table now this network here this one here and this one here these are remote networks to router 2. So router 2 needs to know how to get to this destination. We can do it, we can tell it statically, or we can tell it remotely. 
from show IP root begin gateway we can see that we have typed a static root IP root right to get to 192.168.10.0 with this subnet mask which is this network here use this interface S000 so we can put as a, us as an exit interface or our serial 00 interface to get to this network here IP root 192.168.11.0 with this subnet mask use the neighbor's IP address right so we can either say our exit interface or the neighbor's IP address and but then when we do show IP root we can see the table see administrative distance if it's one for the static root so when we tell the neighbor's IP address right we see an administrative distance of one but even if we say our exit interface is still going to be it doesn't display here but it's it's always one yeah for static root it's always one even though it doesn't show in this when we do show IP root it doesn't show in the table default static roots are the roots like okay well it lost resort if I don't if it's not on the routing table I try match 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 there's no match then last resort is our default root so that's how we configure IP root then it's four zeros so these are four zeros and then there's a gap space another four zeros so that means the first four zeros is like the network any network with any subnet mask any network without any subnet mask we go out from s000 cool dynamic routing dynamic routing is used by routers to share information about the reachability and status of remote networks so instead of putting static routes now we're doing dynamic routing it performs network discovery and maintains the routing table again more a lot more in chapter 7 and semester 3 and semester 4 IPv4 and IPv6 routing tables routing protocols and here we have some IPv4 routing protocol like EIGRP for example uh, OSPF and uh, RIP these are the routing protocols that we're gonna learn in OSPF ISIS uh, we're not gonna learn it it's more about the ISPs kind of intermediate system to intermediate system the IPv6 routing table uh, routing protocols we have RIP NG or RIP next generation this is like a more advanced RIP well, for version 6 OSPF version 3 that does support OSPF uh, version 2 as well it does support IPv4 OSPF and IPv6 OSPF so these are not just for IPv6 EIGRP for IPv6 well this is just for IPv6 and MPVGP this is exterior gateway protocol to configure Cisco routers, we have a GUI as well, we can configure it, and that is through a Cisco configuration protocol. Well, this is uh, Cisco just kind of like it tells you that there is a GUI. You can start configuring Cisco routers through graphical user interface, that stands for GUI. Or, you know, more the main attention we pay is how to configure it through command line interface or CLI. But just so you know, there's a GUI. You can go and do your research how to get this Cisco configuration protocol and play around with it. Uh, from the experience, it's quite difficult to get the Java working with the GUI. There's one version of Java that actually does work. I think it's um, Java 8 uh, version c release 6. I'm not sure which one. It's only one of them that actually does, does work. The rest, you're going to have trouble anyway you, for you to find out. Okay, thank you very much for watching this section, 4.3, Routing Operations, and please have a look at my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe. My name is Asif Krasnishi, and bye-bye.